What's going on? How's everyone doing? Shout out to you. Everybody else who's cool with the power. Shucky! I didn't say. Eat your popcorn. And your Coca Cola and relax. <laughs> anyway, tell Colin. I'm ready. What's going on? This is Colin. How's everybody doing? I got a good one. I know I say that every time, but do I do I ever put out bad ones? Eh, maybe in your opinion, not mine. All right, this guy, this guy loves boating. He can't stop boating. He's under a court order to not drive a boat or a vessel. <laughs> You'll see. And yeah, let's go. Before I hit that play button, you know what to do. Hit the like and subscribe. Do your chub kick backflips. Now let's go. And we've done that in the past. There's an acknowledgement of a bond violation. However, there's an explanation as for it. The court can take that explanation and then we would just argue as what we believe should be the result of the violation. Very well. We can proceed next action. So is she part of the requirement? It doesn't sound like there's going to be acknowledgement of the operation. If there's not, he's here so we can vote. Come on. It's required by Yes, he is acknowledging that judge. Okay, very well. Mr. Kowski, what are you requesting? Well, in light of what the bond condition was, it was that, uh, that Mr. Carr is not supposed to operate a vessel. And um, I believe it was the day after the preliminary examination or the weekend after the preliminary examination was held, uh, he was observed operating a vessel on um, one of the canals. A picture was taken or a couple pictures were taken we had uh, provided those to the defense and because of that uh, as um, uh, this case is a circumstance where it was operation of a airboat um, where it's alleged that mr carr had circled the victims cutting the ice free um, and one individual had went into the ice because of that the district court put that condition into the bond and uh, it was in there, it's been in there ever since the beginning of the case. So because of that, we're asking that the, the court uh, revoke the bond and uh, let the matter set for trial. Okay, uh, I don't I don't understand what this crime is. He just, that's what the prosecutor just said. So what, what we're talking about right now is a bond violation. He's not supposed to be operating a boat because of what he, what the prosecutor just said. He was circling the ice, breaking the ice around the victim, and somebody fell into the ice. It, I mean, I guess in my head I can picture that, but I don't. I don't understand it. I, I don't. So if, if anyone knows what the, what he's talking about, please leave it in the comments because I'm I'm absolutely clueless. Besides, you know, an airboat. When I think of an airboat, I think of those boats with the giant fans on them down in the, you know, Louisiana, Florida, the you know that go through the swamps. So that's that's what I'm thinking of, and he was doing that over ice. So that, now you're with me. It doesn't make sense to me. So someone please help me with this. Your Honor, after the preliminary examination, it was Memorial Day weekend. Uh, Mr. Carr and his girlfriend, her significant other, significant other Gabriel Raymond, and I discussed after the preliminary examination whether it would be appropriate to go fishing over the, that weekend. My explanation, I said, yeah, that would be fine as long as Miss Raymond, his significant other, would be operating the boat. Uh, as the bond condition does state that Mr. Carr was not to operate a vessel. During that weekend, uh, Miss Raymond was operating the vessel with Mr. Carr just as a passenger, and they did go fishing. They were trying to go and get bluegill in one of the canals. And unfortunately, Miss Miss Raymond uh, got scared due to the holiday being Memorial Day. Got congested. She was fearful of of having some form of impact with any other congestion or any other boat traffic that was in the canal during the holiday. Mr. Carter simply took took the wheel to assist her. That was all that he did. He wasn't operating in the sense of being uh, in violence or any way he was just trying to do this for the purposes of safety uh, he didn't want anyone to get hurt or injured due to his significant other miss 
uh, Raymond having some concerns with the lack of experience of operating. Oh, while she does have an operator's license, it was simply she got scared. She's only 25 years old. Uh, so Mr. Carr was just trying to aid her. They did their fishing for 45 minutes and then then they left. And Miss Miss Raymond ended up operating the vessel and they left safely. Uh, I, I understand that and Mr. Carr understands that the alleged offense is, is has to do with uh, the operation of a vessel. However, I do want the court to consider that when there is an operation of a motor vehicle, such as an operating while intoxicated, generally, and Mr. Carr and I have had multiple conversations about this, the court doesn't revoke the ability for the individual to drive and operate a, a motor vehicle. Usually the Secretary of State does that upon a plea being taken. But it also, in fairness though, it's normally not based upon a charge of operating while intoxicated where it's alleged an assaultive act occurred. Notice I said alleged. Understood. Operating while intoxicated is getting behind the motor vehicle while ha having a blood alcohol above a certain legal limit. You may continue. Understood. So Your Honor, what we're asking today is we're asking some, some grace from this court. Mr. Carr does not have any prior criminal history. This is all completely new to him. Uh, while revoking the bonds may have, may provide some form of, of justice uh, by this court, it, it, it doesn't serve the purpose. He learned his lesson by being here today. The fact that we're here again is a reminder that he has to follow those bond conditions or if this court wants to amend the bond conditions and say you cannot even be on a boat rather than operate the boat, that would make it even more strict for Mr. Carr. He understands that. So again, Judge, we are just asking for some grace if the fine can be assessed for Mr. Carr. We don't think his bond should be revoked. We're just asking that the bond be reassessed and that he continue to be out on bond because I do believe we are continued forward for trial on this matter. Mr. Rakowski, the court through the motion, I believe, has copies of the pictures, correct? Yes. So, I mean, they show what it is. And I mean, I understand the defense's argument that uh, the passenger was scared, but I mean, she's got her arms up on the uh, on the windshield. Mr. Carr is driving. Uh, the idea that, uh, you know, this bond condition says that you can't operate a, a boat. Well, we have cases where a vehicle is used to try to run somebody down or scare them with the vehicle and the court imposes rules that say no operation of a motor vehicle or if there's a drunk driving the court can do that as well so the fact that it's in there it's in there because as the court points out the alleged uh, criminal activity here is driving an airboat towards these individuals so you know given the circumstances given the fact that you know the court down in district court went through the bond with mr carr at the very beginning I'm sure he reiterated, although I was not at the prelim that was handled by Mr. Connie, uh, reiterated that the bond conditions continue. And yet a few days later, we have that uh, the violation here that was caught on uh, with pictures. So that's what we provided to the court. The court, we understand, has a lot of latitude. The court could say, you know, don't do it again, and we don't have to do anything. The court can revoke his bond and issue a new bond to him, or can revoke a bond and have him go to jail. We're asking for the for the latter, given the fact that the underlying facts of the case are very serious. Um, but with that, if the court's going to consider allowing Mr. Carr out on any type of bond, then it would be that he not be on the waterways at all. No boats, no jet skis, no nothing. That he not be allowed on the waterway while the case is pending. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, all right. So we kind of know what's going on here. I, I'm still kind of confused of what the, the crime was. He was driving an airboat at people. They said he was breaking up ice. I, I'm still confused. But this guy just can't stay out of a vessel, you know? And he just loves his vessel. Right. Memorial Day weekend, he went to go fishing. They said he went fishing for 45 minutes. That's not a really fun fishing trip. For 45 minutes, that, that's, that's barely enough time to get to where you're, you want to even go fishing. And you get there, you throw your line out, and then you just turn around and go home. Doesn't sound like his girlfriend wanted to go fishing that badly. Anyways, I'm going to let this video play out. How many times can you say vessel in one comment? I want to see. All right. You guys all have a great day. And, yeah. Until next time. Bye. Wow.
this judge. This was a lapse in judgment. Uh, Mr. Carr understands that we're here today. We're acknowledging it. We stipulated to to the misunderstanding. We're asking that there be no further jail, that he just simply be allowed still on bond. As I stated before, it's the first time he's ever been involved in the criminal justice system. He doesn't have a prior criminal background. It's set for trial. It's hard enough that he's here already. This is a reminder for him. This will never happen again. I'll leave it that. Thank you. Well, the Fed is presumed is that he must prove guilty in court by a jury of his peers. And at this point, then it is presumed innocent. That's what it continues. That's our constitution. That's how we proceed. Bond conditions, however, seem to be very clear at the district court level. The defendant is not to be operating a boat. When I look at the photos and, and I'm hearing the explanation, I mean, I'll, I'm just being honest, I mean, a picture is, uh, is certainly not completely indicative of someone's feelings, whether they're nervous or upset, but when you look at the photographs here, you have a shirtless defendant operating a boat, no question, the individual to his left, and just going out and doing their thing, going fishing. It's a violation of bond, period. Uh, whether you're nervous or not, if, if, if you're nervous, then you should be operating a boat. And much less having someone else operate a boat who doesn't have the authority to operate it to begin with. Court in this case is going to revoke the bond that was originally ordered in this case. $1,000 is forfeited to the county. Court will set a new bond. $10,000, 10% with the same conditions, but not only not operate any type of vessel, he is not to be on any public or private waterway in any way, shape, or form. I don't care if it's a floating. He's not to be in the water, period. All other bond conditions remain. That'll be all. Awesome.